Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. I almost forgot the name of the company I work for. Joined by the wonderful Bill Marino. How are you, Hi. Bill? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Howard. Of course. Thanks for joining me. This is going to be an exciting show. Half an hour of talking about the world we live in and how to solve for some of those problems. And Bill, you've been at Adobe for how long? I've been here for just over two years, just hit okay. my anniversary. Nice, congratulations. And you are you. in the world of artificial intelligence, stuff way over my head. Talk about that for a second. So I'm on a team called Applied Science and Machine Learning. I'm a product manager on that team. And uh, what our team does is we help uh, add more of that delightful sensei magic to uh, all of the Adobe products. Ooh, that's exciting. Again, way over my head, all that artificial intelligence stuff. But I know a lot of people in the chat are really excited for not only this show, but artificial intelligence and figuring out how to solve for many of the problems and challenges that we've been running into lately. Uh, but before we dive into things, I want to say a big hello to everyone joining us in chat today. If you are tuning in live, let us know who you are, where you're tuning in from. If you're on YouTube, head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live so you can join the chat. We've got Jason and Laura and Flynn and Sam and Annie and Beck and Elizabeth and Agnes and Jack and a lot of a lot of other people tuning in. So yeah, but let us know where you're tuning in from. So Bill, you, you just wrapped up a cool partnership and you're kind of in the mix, mix, midst of it. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, talk, talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Howard. So yeah. uh, Design in a Day is a series of design thinking workshops uh, that were developed and led by the Adobe Design and Corporate Responsibility Teams. And in these workshops, we usually partner with nonprofits to help solve real world challenges. Recently, during the pandemic, we did a virtual version of this workshop. In it, we partnered uh, with a number of marvelous Bay Area arts organizations um, to help them come up with new ways to stay connected with their communities uh, and audiences in this new socially distanced reality. I love that. I'm showing on my screen now a few of those partners that we've been working with. And I shouldn't say we, I've been doing nothing, but you and the team have been doing a lot. And it's it's really nice to see that you know these things are coming up right now obviously the pandemic and everything is just heartbreaking but you know there's a lot of opportunities now to really start looking at things in different ways right you know museums you can't physically go to them right now which is a shame because i love walking through museums seeing sculptures and art and a lot of different really amazing pieces and there's an opportunity to bring that digitally right now. And the work that you and the team have been doing has been fantastic. Thanks so much. Well, it was really exciting and, and just a great experience to team up with these museums and, and hear about what they were going through and try to ideate some um, you know, solutions to that. Absolutely. And part of that solution was actually using one of the newer plugins that's available for Adobe XD, the whiteboard plugin. And I have it on my screen here. If anyone does not have the whiteboard plugin, you can find it in the plugins manager up plugins and discover plugins and just go ahead and search for whiteboard. It was a plugin designed by a team at Adobe and it just offers so many different templates and with co-editing now available in XD, you can all go crazy and work on the same thing. So what kind of things have you been working on using this whiteboard plugin, Bill? Sure. So during the design workshop itself, um, we used the whiteboard plugin to um, collaborate and we were in there ideating, sketching out our ideas. And uh, what was really cool, of course, is that we were able to see everyone's updates in real time and react to them. Uh, so it, it turned out to be a really great way for us to collaborate during this virtual version of the Design of the Day workshop. I love that. And it looks like you have a ton of different artboards, including these crazy eights over here. And what I'm, what I'm going to do, because we only have about 20 minutes or so uh, to, to get through this, I'm going to start designing something and I'm going to be kind of building out a landing page for what could be something like a virtual museum. And then during my masterclass on Friday at 12 Pacific time, I'm going to be taking this to another level and maybe building out a mobile app and something like that. So while I'm starting my designing, Talk to us about Crazy Eights because it just looks like it looks like a good time. 
Yeah, and, and maybe I'll give a little bit, just to tee that up, maybe I'll give a little bit of a background real quick on design thinking and what it is. Sure. In case you're new to it, design thinking is a process for creative problem solving. Okay. In a design thinking workshop, you usually start by coming to grips with a user problem and building empathy for the users. You then move into a rapid ideation phase where you generate as many potential solutions as possible. Uh, you will later uh, go ahead and, and build some lo-fi prototypes of some of those solutions that you can actually put in front of representative users and try to get validation. So we use Crazy Eights for that middle phase, for the rapid ideation phase. If you've ever done Crazy Eights um, in the physical world, you take a piece of paper, you fold it up so that it has eight sections, and then you spend eight minutes coming up with eight uh, idea, ideas. Uh, so as fast as you can, sketching them out. And of course here we use the Crazy Eights template inside of Whiteboard uh, mm -hmm. to do this digitally. And we had a lot of fun, you could see that we're using uh, icons and we were using the draw tool and typing text and just, just having a lot of fun. Nice. And I've never personally done any, any sort of crazy eight stuff, but it sounds like a blast. And I know there were, there were a lot of ideas that came out of this particular project and brainstorming session. What, what are some of the ones that really stood out to you? Oh, there was all kinds of cool projects. Um, you know, a, a common theme uh, was giving museums a way to digitally recreate that wonderful feeling that we all associate with museums, this kind of choose your own adventure experience of wandering through a museum and, and encountering the artworks and so forth. Um, so folks came up with some really uh, interesting ideas for kind of emulating that in the digital realm. Um, some of them involved augmented reality. Um, we had some other really interesting ideas, um, you know, live streaming um, a session with an artist cooking their favorite meal and also telling you a little bit about their art. Um, storefronts um, that might have a little bit of empty space right now, um, providing a, a, a place to um, display the artworks that are right now inside the museum. So we had a, a lot of really cool ideas come out of the session. Um, and I think the museum has really enjoyed it and benefited from it. Yeah, I definitely agree. And just in case anyone's wondering what I'm working on is I'm starting to build out a landing page of what that could potentially look like. And again, if anyone's joining, I might be building upon this during my masterclass on Friday. And if anyone has questions throughout this little short stream, throw them in the chat. Both Bill and I are taking a look and we'd love to hear some of your suggestions on, you know, in, in this new world that we're living in, where a lot of things are transitioning digitally, what would you like to see in an application or a website or some sort of a service where, so yeah, Felipe is saying Sophia Pro is back in the house. I always use Sophia Pro. What would you like to see in a service like this that would kind of bring museums internally? And Bill, from, you know, personally, what would you like to see? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think, what is what's really cool and valuable to me is to create a solution that not only makes sense today with everything we're going through during the pandemic but um you know bridges um bridges into the post-pandemic world and, and maybe even opens up museums to new audiences right um my favorite museum in the world is del prado in madrid i'm a huge goya fan and and that's where some of um, some of my favorite Goya works uh, call home. So uh, is there a way that, you know, we can learn from everything we're going through today and, and create this new wave of digital experiences for museums that not only get us through this period and give folks a way to connect with museums today, but, but also maybe open up, um, open up a new way to interact with museums, even the ones that you are, you know, uh, physically, uh, distant from. I haven't been to Spain uh, for probably a decade. Um, but if, if there's some kind of way that I can go and see my favorite works um, and interact with them a little bit, I think that's really exciting. I completely agree. And, you know, I haven't been to Spain at all, 
I've been to some parts of Europe, but not Spain. I would love to just browse through some of those museums. Of course, you know, nothing beats physically going there and seeing some of these beautiful paintings and sculptures that have been around for centuries. But at, at times like this, you can't even hop on a plane right now. You can't go into buildings with other people. Uh, hopefully that improves at some point in the future, but this this is could definitely help that. And what's nice about something like this is of course, you know, we see some of these paintings online and we see some of these sculptures, but having an app that maybe allows you to virtually explore some of these, and a lot of people in the chat are talking about AR and VR and these different technologies that are kind of emerging now, is that could be the, the first stepping stone to getting somebody into a, a physical museum, right? If you can put on a headset or just look at your screen and you can physically or virtually walk through this museum, that could get your interest going, especially if you give something like this to children who are in school. It could be really cool. So what I'm doing now is I've, I've got the, the header of this, this landing page. I've got some body text, some buttons, and it does look like there are a bunch of people in the chat talking about ideas. A lot of people are mentioning Adobe Dimension, which would be really cool eventually if, you know, if Dimension was integrated with Adobe XD. But even now, you can use Dimension to, you know, create some really cool things that you can incorporate with AR and VR. So Bill, as I'm working on this, what are some of the cooler projects that you've been working on at Adobe that you're allowed to talk about? I know there's a lot of things that you probably can't talk about just yet, but what have you been working on? Sure, so um, my biggest project as a PM is uh, Auto Reframe, which um, mm. is part of P Premiere Pro now. Of course. And um, it was unveiled at Max last year. If, if, you're, uh, if you're watching, and you know auto reframe and you love it, let us know in those comments. Uh, but what it does basically is it helps you automatically convert a video that you've shot to new aspect ratios. So you go out, you shoot this awesome video in um, horizontal, and then you want to bounce it down to a vertical for TikTok or Snapchat or Square for Instagram. I think we're too um, old for TikTok, Bill. <laughs> I, I I can't get into it. I'm just I'm just too old. Oh no no not at all hard. Uh, <laughs> well I uh, you know I, I challenge you to to go on TikTok and to, not a chance to share it with the the viewers here. Not a chance. A future episode. <laughs> so um, auto reframe will kind of you know make this process very fast using uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. Uh, nice. And, uh, I think it's real cool. I'm, 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 we're all real proud of that one because um, we like to think that it, it's um, artificial intelligence being used to reduce some of the drudgery, you know, and it lets creators um, kind of maybe go a little bit faster through some of those more tedious aspects of the video publishing process and get back to, you know, being Steve, Steven Spielberg and, and, um, the kind of more creative work. So I'm, I'm real proud of that one. That's exciting. A lot of people are saying uh, you can do really do some cool yeah. XD videos on TikTok. Oh boy. Am yeah, I there have seems to, do to be this? a lot of excitement for you to to create a TikTok account and, and, and presumably do some dances and stuff. Uh, there's no way I'm dancing on camera on anything. If so you're... go ahead. Could I engage a little bit with the uh, viewers? Absolutely. Um, if you are, since we're talking today about museums and um, just how much we love and appreciate them, tell us, uh, if you will, in the comments, what is your favorite museum? What's the museum that you just can't wait to uh, get back to? Yeah, I would love to hear those too. So I'm fully based saying TikTok frightens them. What's your favorite museum, Howard? Oh, I forget what it's called, but there was one in Toronto I really loved. Um, oh boy, it's been a while since I've been there, but I grew up in Toronto, so I, I was I've been there a few times, but the name is escaping me. Are you familiar with any museums in Toronto? I've been to Toronto. It's a wonderful city, uh, but I don't believe I spent any time in its museums, unfortunately. Okay, well maybe someone in the chat might know. Help me out, chat. 
All right, so down here, I've gone ahead and created a repeat grid and I've covered repeat grids a million times. But if you're new to XD, if you haven't explored it yet, letsxd.com, I've got some good stuff on repeat grids. And one thing I wanna do is, you know, in this section here, I might want to start exposing some art and sculptures to the audience that might land on this landing page, right? So if we take a look here, we if we play the preview, We've got what looks like landing page right now and you can scroll down and you'll be able to start to see some of those pieces. And I should go ahead and make this a little bit longer. And in just a second, I do want to explore another plugin that's gonna help a lot with collaboration. We have some, uh, taking a look at chat bill, we have some answers coming in. Museum of Science in Boston, Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. This one Reminds really caught my attention. I uh, the Icelandic Museum of Rock and Roll. Now that's Ooh, that sounds fancy. The uh, the Van Gogh Museum reminds me of the the Doctor Who episode, one of my favorite episodes. I don't know if you're a Doctor Who fan, but um, I I grew up watching the first kind of generation of Doctor Who. Okay. Um, tell me about the episode that you're referring to. Oh, they basically go back and and visit Van Gogh, and you know he's of course he he lived a very rough life. Um, his paintings never. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who who, uh, who hasn't seen it, but his paintings never really took off when he was alive. So the 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 non spoilerly spoilerly version. I mean, it's going to be spoilery. So if you if you haven't seen it yet, mute. Um, they you know Van they take Van Gogh back to the present time. They walk him through a museum, and he sees an exhibit of all of his pieces, and it's just a such a touching moment. It's one of the best scenes that I've seen. Um, nice. so yeah, so I've got my repeat grid looking pretty good. One thing I want to do before I actually fill this repeat grid, I want to show you a really cool plugin. I might want to create an anchor link, which is a fairly new feature in Adobe XD. So within prototype mode, if I select the button that I want to trigger that interaction, if I just drag it down here to this repeat grid, it's going to highlight in blue and that will allow me to create that anchor link and it'll create a scroll to type over here to the right. And what that'll allow me to do is if I press the play button and I press start exploring, it automatically takes me down there. So you don't have to necessarily scroll. And you can imagine if you're working with a landing page that maybe it's broken up into uh, paintings and sculptures and I don't know what else might be in museums, right? So you might have links at the top, maybe they're fixed into place and you can very easily navigate to the various sections without having to scroll and scroll and scroll, right? All right, so let's talk about that plugin for for in a second. So we have our repeat grid right over here, and the plugin I want to showcase is called Google Sheets, which is right here. And this will allow you to basically pull in data from spreadsheets. So you might be working with other people who are in control of a bunch of data. I'm, I'm not someone who likes spreadsheets, right? So over in Safari, I've got this sheet right here. It just has a bunch of art pieces, it has the artists, and it has the year they were created, or the approximate year in some cases, and also links to images. So if I go ahead and just copy this link, if I hop over back here, I select the repeat grid, I go to paste public link, I'm gonna paste it in here and continue. It's gonna automatically map out the various elements in that repeat grid to the columns inside of that spreadsheet and if it didn't like in this case i didn't name it properly i can go ahead and select it map it out manually and when i press apply it's going to take all that information and automatically pop it into the repeat grid which is incredibly cool and saves a ton of time and of course all the benefits of repeat grids remains intact so you can just double click into it make some changes to the mask if you needed to make some of the information smaller or drop the opacity at all all of that syncs right so if i press cool. play it just looks so much better looks amazing now before we wrap up i want to talk a little bit more about the whiteboard plugin so we've got a bunch of different templates let's hop over to whiteboard and you said the you use the affinity um template at some point yeah we use what's called uh, an affinity diagram we use that template. It's a tool for gathering and organizing ideas. Yeah. So when you're in this plugin, 
if you just click on any of these templates, it's gonna automatically pop one open. I'm running out of space here, but let me move this over here. And especially if you're working with co-editing, you can just all jump in there and you know make some changes. So talk a little bit about this affinity diagram, Bill. Sure. Um, so again, affinity diagram, it's, it's a tool for gathering and then organ, organizing your ideas. Um, so uh, the way this design workshop that we referenced at the start of the show, uh, the way it kicked off is that we had a panel discussion where all the museums uh, told us what, what they were going through and what their various stakeholders, their visitors, and the participants in their programming were going through. Uh, we heard all of that and we poured it all into this uh, affinity diagram mm -hmm. in the form of these sort of digital sticky notes that you see on there. We then talked through those as a group um, and we bundled them into thematic clusters and you can see those in there too. And that helped us pick out a problem statement and then decide what we are going to focus on for our ide ideation phase. Um, so yeah, it, it worked really nicely and, and we had a blast with it. I love this. And I've been definitely part of many brainstorming sessions where you've all been in a room. Sometimes there can be dozens of people in a room. It gets really sweaty in there. But you're all using like physical sticky notes and you're sticking things on the board. And then afterwards, it's kind of just all disappears. Someone forgets the sticky notes somewhere or they, I don't know where they go. Um, but using a plugin like this and an affinity diagram, you've got these virtual sticky notes, which you can all color code, you know, as you select uh, different areas, you can go to elements, you can add your own sticky notes. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can do. There's also this ability to draw in this plugin, which is crazy. I didn't even know this was possible in XD plugins, but the team somehow figured it out. And you can just hop in here, you can just draw. And if you have a Wacom stylus or a, a tablet, it just makes life so much easier too. I'm just using a trackpad right now, but you can draw on there, apply it, and then give people feedback. Now I did see very quickly, uh, Vanessa, I think in the chat is asking if you can take what you've built in Adobe XD, for example, this landing page and export it as a functioning website. And the answer is yes and also no. So natively within Adobe XD, you can export at for as a, you know for your developer specs and you can grab css snippets but in terms of ex exporting directly to html natively you can't do it but there are a few plugins that will help you do it one of the recent ones is anima and some people have had pretty good success it's always very difficult translating design to code at least properly especially with constraints and you know resizing and things like that so it's a yes and no answer. I wish I had a better answer, but that's kind of where we're at. All right, so we have about a minute and a half left. What what are the next steps for this, Bill? So uh, we are excited to continue to team up with these museums and um, hopefully make one or more of the solutions that we uh, prototyped during the workshop a reality and uh, help them connect with uh, their community during this time and um, and maybe build a bridge to uh, new ways to connect uh, beyond that. So I'll, I'll keep you updated, Howard. Um, I'm really excited to see how it all transpires. Yeah, I am too, because we've had a few people in the chat. Uh, Steve just mentioned this time slot is far too short, needs to be at least 90 minutes. Uh, and then Arthur agrees with him. And there are a few other people I saw mentioned that they would love to see more of this. And I will definitely be expanding upon this on Friday during my masterclass, 12, 12 o'clock Pacific time. But, you know, Bill, if you get any more interesting ideas, especially ones that maybe haven't even been thought about yet, throw them in, throw them over to me and um, we can continue this at some point. That'd be great. I'd love to keep collabing with you, Howard. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So we're going to wrap things up. Again, it was a shorter stream usual but maybe this will turn into something more frequent and again i will be back on friday for my master class a big thank you to everyone joining us in chat today pollyanna and laura and cornell and steve and maximilian if i mispronounce anyone's name i do apologize sam and vanessa and jennifer and everyone else we'll continue this this is this a lot of fun any last parting words bill uh thanks so much for having me on howard i really appreciate it and to everyone else um you know 
make contact with those museums that you love. Um, try to find a way to support them during this time. And of yep. course, um, on your own, continue to stay safe and, and try to find ways together to be together uh, digitally. And thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe. We'll see you next time.